Hello AWS friends, in this video we're gonna have a look on IPv6 on AWS. Uh, IPv6 is not yet uh, so much adapted, but this will change within the next times. So we're running out of IPv4 addresses and sooner or later you have to figure out how this works with IPv6. Therefore, we are um, going to look on the VPC itself in this video. Maybe um, within some of the next videos I will show how to set up a EC2, it's IPv6 or Fargate service, but on this tutorial let's focus on the VPC itself. We are going to create our VPC here on the um, dashboard on the web console, but please have also a look in my GitHub repo here. The repo is AWS IPv6 where you already found some infrastructure as code examples for um, CloudFormation, CDK and Terraform. The most advanced in this moment are the CloudFormation examples where you can create by CloudFormation a dual stack VPC for IPv6 and IPv6 only and here are some other examples for um, web server for EC2s, um, for Elastic Load Balancer and for Fargate service. Before we get started and create our first VPC, let's have a short um, look on the theory behind IPv6. So you all know um, IPv4 addresses, we are working with this since the beginning of the internet, so your local address, local host address for example might be 127.0.0.1. You know there are public IP addresses to communicate over the internet. Each IPv4 address is built of four 8-bit numbers, which gives us um, um, 32 bits uh, all together. So each of them are basically uh, one byte. And this gives us approximately 4 billion of IPv4 addresses. You might think this is um, quite a huge number, but just think of all the devices we got by now with IoT, with, uh, with handies. Um, so this might um, become a little bit short and therefore IPv6 is the new standard and we should take a look. There's one more important thing to understand. Um, with IPv4 we have the concept of public IP addresses and private IP addresses. As the set ranges for private IP addresses are well defined. So um, we have for example these ranges which we can use to create our VPCs on AWS or for our intranet for our company network and therefore we have to differ between a private IP address and a public IP address. Think of a private IP address as for example if you are inside a company building and you have here whatever um, a bunch of uh, offices, uh, let's say 400 offices, so you can uh, send your post within your building with your office number. So office number 100 can send a letter to 215 and vice versa. Um, so this can happen in quite a bunch of, of office buildings without um, knowing of each other so that you just will be able to communicate inside their buildings which are the private IP addresses which is equally when you are communicating in your VPC with a private IP address. On the other side you have public IP addresses so if you want to communicate um, with a device with a, a computer server on the, other on the other side of the earth, you will have to do though by a public IP address. To be able to communicate um, with our private IP addresses, also with public IP addresses, we need a little bit help. For example, a NAT gateway. NAT means basically network address translation, so we have to be able to communicate with a private IP address, with a public IP address, like Internet Gateway for example, or a proxy server. That's an important feature which we have in IPv4. Now let's have a look on IPv6. This is what an IPv6 number looks like. As you can see, it's composed of eight 
um, hexadecimal digits um, and each of those got 16 bits which gives us um, um, together 128 bits so quite more than IPv6. The first four digits um, are working as a network part where the, f the last four are kind of the node part and what else is important to know well you don't have really um, private and public IP addresses all addresses are public routable and therefore we don't need no NAT gateway we can communicate from IP address to IP address without any uh, further tools now let's create our VPC so I will define a name for it IPv6 I will keep the IP V4 SIDA range, we will create a dual stack VPC, right? So, therefore, we have to enable here the um, SIDA block for IPv6. Amazon provided SIDA block, we can keep the tenancy. We will also keep two availability zones, that's fine for our example. And we will have two public and two private subnets, that's perfect. We will define no NAT gateway, that's exactly what. We want to avoid a uh, net gateway cost about $30 a month, only the hours and not even the transfer costs. Uh, we will define an address only internet gateway, that's what our private um, um, resources, or at least which are uh, placed in a private subnet, will need to communicate with the internet gateway. That's the equivalent for a net gateway. Um, we actually don't need the VPC endpoints for right now, but I will keep it. Enable DNS host names is a good choice for IPv6, and we will go with these settings and say create VPC. Take a while, and I'll be back in a second. Now we can have a look at what was created. Though so that's the default VPC, which uh, already has been there and this is the new IPv6 VPC, a dual stack VPC. We have a IPv4 SIDA range and we have, that's the important part, the SIDA range for IPv6 uh, slash 56. That's quite a lot of IP addresses. What else do we see here? Um, default VPC of course not, that was already there. We have a IPv6 pool and we have the SIDA range as already seen. We should have four subnets. Yes, that's correct. We have public one and two and private one and two. And let's see, for example here, we have a slash 64 SIDA range for our IPv6 for the subnets. Um, we have the settings for um, enable IPv4 um, public IP addresses in the public and uh, disable in the private settings. Important thing to also look are the route tables. Of course, we should update here and we see we can have a look on the public route table. What is it gonna do? Though that's important, the syntax for. IPv6, as you might know, this is IPv4 syntax. Um, it's routing over the internet gateway the tra uh, the traffic to um, the whole internet, and this is uh, similar for IPv6. Um, it means every traffic is routed to the internet gateway forward. Let's have a look on the private um, route table. So. Um, we have the internet traffic outside again here over the address only internet gateway and here we have the, the local traffic um, uh, which is the SIDA range of our um, VPC uh, inside the VPC. Actually this should also be here in the public um, um, route table so each local traffic keeps inside the VPC and the traffic which goes outside this SIDA range goes to the internet but the difference here is um, we use a ACRES only internet gateway and there is no um, traffic from outside our VPC possible because we have as the name said 
only here a connection to the ACRES only internet gateway and not to the internet gateway. What else? Still we get an internet gateway and I have to refresh this. So for traffic for our public um, subnet we use the internet gateway as we have seen in the row tables and instead of a net we have by now these address only internet gateway for the communication from our private subnets to the internet in one direction only. What else is important? We should see no net gateway though this will economize a little bit money for us and that's the most important part of the VPC we have created. So in the next video I will launch some EC2 instances. I might also create a Fargate service and we can see how everything works in our IPv6 address. Keep in mind we still got an IPv4 address in the Stoolstick VPC. The important thing for you to notice by now is the IPv6 city ranges. Uh, you have seen we still got an internet gateway but we have no NAT gateway and we will have instead a address only internet gateways and important also the syntax for the routes for VP IPv6 um, that's a little bit different from the uh, syntax for IPv4. That's it for now. Stay tuned and have a look into the next videos for launching resources in our IPv6 and VPC. Thanks for listening and see you on the next video.